Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about pressure versus volume. Uh, you should have just done the lab and hopefully you were paying attention and you can remember your results, but just in case you've forgotten what you saw or it was a while ago, um, let's take a look at this. Here we've got a guy in a container. I think some of that container is not quite in the video there. And I don't know if I can fix that. Um, he's got a little container here. There we go, now you can see it all. Um, and it's got some gas in it and there's a pressure of uh, 0.45 atms and the temperature is 300 kelvin and it takes up this much space. And if we squish that gas into a smaller amount of space, roughly half, we'll see the pressure go up. You also saw the temperature change, but we're trying to see what happens if the temperature is the same, so we'll wait till that gets back down to 300. There we go. And now we're at a point about 0.8, which is roughly twice. So we have half the volume and twice the pressure. Um, that's actually how this works. Hopefully you saw in your lab that pressure and volume were inversely related. So let's fill out our Cornell paper here. All right, so here we're starting. Uh, make sure you put your name there in the class period and date. Um, our objective here is 3.3 uh, uh, pressure versus volume, uh, unit three, objective three, and our essential question is how are pressure and volume related and how do we use that relationship to solve problems? So here we've got pressure versus volume. I'm going to draw um, uh, my artist's impression of the graph that you should have seen with pressure on the side and volume um, on the, the x-axis here. We changed the volume and as we had a smaller volume, we saw the pressure go up and as we had a bigger volume, we saw the pressure go down, and so the graph ended up looking something like this. This graph is called an inverse relationship, which means that they're doing the opposite thing. And what that looks like here is that um, volume and pressure are going in opposite directions. So as the volume went up, the pressure went down, and as the volume went down, the pressure went up. And that's what we saw in the lab. So how do we use that information to do some calculations? Well, let's take a look at an example problem. Okay, so this is how I like to set these up. This one says, if the volume of a container is compressed from 30 to 15 milliliters, what will the new pressure be if the original pressure was 4 atm? Now you guys know how I just love charts. So let's make a chart here. And this is what I like to do. I like to make one side for pressure and one side for volume and then a place to write my information, and then I like to draw some arrows down here. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these numbers. So I've got a 30 and a 15, and I'm going to put an I here and an F here, initial and final. So it says that it, I'm compressing it from 30 to 15. So the from is my initial, and the final is 2. Or it ends up as start, finish. Either way, those words indicate where it's at. So I've got my 30 milliliters would go right here. And my 15 milliliters would go here. These are volumes. That's why I put them over there. That's a, uh, It says volume, but if you're not sure, you can always go by the units. Milliliters measures volume, so that goes there. Um, it says, what will the new pressure be if the original pressure was 4 atm? So that 4 atm is my original pressure. I'm going to put it right here. All right, so I've got my initial and my final. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to think about what's changing. So my volume, I can see my volume is going down. My volume is going down. And over there on the pressure side, um, I can think about what I can expect my answer to be like. So we just talked about it. There are opposite things. Pressure and volume do opposite things. So this time I'm going to draw my arrow up. If my answer isn't bigger, then I know I've, I've done something wrong, okay? So that I, I use those errors to, to check myself, okay? All right, so the next thing I have to do is I need to figure out, well, how, how much did it change? So we just looked at um, the, that little simulator there. We saw that when we had half the pressure, we had twice the volume, and uh, they changed in opposite manners, but with the same multiplier. So I have to figure out the multiplier. I'm gonna write that here um, a little clearly. Um, I must find the multiplier. It has to be a multiplier. I can't add or subtract. Adding and subtracting isn't what I looked at on the graph. Um, I looked at changing things. Um, so I have to find a multiplier. 
Okay, so when I think about it, to get from 30 to 15, what I did was divide by 2. I divided by 2 to get from 30 to 15, okay? That means that I'm going to have to multiply by 2 over here, times 2. Those things have to be the opposite. Let's find another color. I'll make a little note here. This and this, because this is an inverse relationship, those have to be opposites, okay? All right, so if my pressure went up uh, and my volume went, or if my volume went down, my pressure has to go up. Four times two, I picked some easy numbers to start off with. This will be eight ATMs. So I have half the volume, twice the pressure, opposites, okay? So that example was kind of an easy one. Hopefully you, maybe, maybe you were able to think about that one. Let's try a little bit harder one. Here's example two. Example two says the pressure in a container is 1.5 ATMs. The volume of the container is expanded from 1.2 to 2.7. What will be the new pressure? Okay, so I'm gonna draw my chart again. So I'm gonna have my pressures and my arrows, and so I'm gonna have an initial and a final. Actually, I wanna put that a little further over so I have some room to work. It's initial and final pressure volume. Okay, so here's, here's what I got. I've got the pressure in a container is 1.5 ATMs. I'm going to assume that's to begin with, okay? ATM. Whatever unit you use, it should be the same unit the second time. The volume of the container is ex expanded from 1.2 to 2.7. So I'm going to put the 1.2 here because it's from, and it's 2, 2.7 right there. Okay, and now I need to know what will be the new pressure. Okay, so let's think about this. What is happening to my volume? Well, my volume is going up. What's happening to my pressure? Well, that's going to have to go down because remember those do the opposite thing. All right, so then when I look at my numbers here, these numbers aren't quite as easy to work with as in the last problem. That last time it went, it went down by half. This time it's going up, but if you look at it, 1.2, 2.7, that's almost double. That's almost double, so I think my answer for the pressure should be all about half. So let's see. I need to figure out what my multiplier is here. My multiplier. I have to figure out what my multiplier is. And if I don't know what my multiplier is, um, well, then I just have to divide those, right? So 2.7 divided by 1.2 is... Plug that into my calculator, 2.7 divided by 1.2, it's about 2.25, 2.25. So if I want to check this, what I need to think about is, is 1.2 times 2.25, I put too many twos there, is, if 1.2 times 2.25 is 2.7, then that's the right multiplier. Well, I can check myself, 1.2 times 2.25. Yes, I did in fact get 2.7. Now, since I multiplied by 2.25 uh, over here, I have to do the opposite on this other side. So I'm going to be dividing, because that's the opposite, dividing by 2.25. 2.25. So now all I have to do is plug that into my calculator. 1.5 divided by 2.25. I'm doing the opposite here. I get 0 0.667 and a whole bunch of other numbers, and then I'm going to use the same units. Now, one thing I didn't do, see this chart? It's a great way to organize information, but we've got to make sure we know exactly what the answer is. So I'm going to write it over here, 8 ATMs. On this one, it's a great chart. My information is nicely organized, but I'm going to write my answer over here, 0 0.667 ATMs, and I like to put a box around it, that way I know exactly what my answer was. So 1.5, that would be $1.50, half of that is what, 75 cents? So I have a little bit less than half, which is what I was kind of expecting. Remember, my volume went up, so I'm expecting my pressure to go down. Let's try one more example that's not nearly as easy. So we've got a gas occupies 37 centimeters cubed and has a pressure of 17 psi. What volume would make the pressure 15 psi? All right, so let me get my chart here. 
I like charts. Charts are helpful. Pressure, volume, initial, final. Okay, so it says a gas occupies 37 centimeters cubed. It doesn't say what that is, but I know that centimeters cubed measures volume, so that 37 has to go right here, centimeters cubed. It has a pressure of 17 PSI, that goes right here. PSI is pounds per square inch, that's a pressure. Uh, it says what volume would make the pressure 15 PSI, so volume is what I'm going to be looking for, so I'm going to leave this blank right here, and I'm going to put the 15 over here, 15 PSI. All right, so then when I start thinking about what's happening here, I, this is what I have to work with, and it looks like my pressure is a little bit less. So I'm going to draw a down arrow. That means that my volume has to do the opposite, so it must get a little bit bigger, but it doesn't have to be much. I only went down a little tiny bit of that PSI, so my volume is probably only going to go up a little tiny bit. So to figure out what my multiplier is, it looks like it's getting smaller, so I'm going to be dividing by something, right? or maybe I'm going to be multiplying by something, uh, we might have to try it. So what I'm going to plug into my calculator is I'm going to try 15 divided by 17. What if you did 17 divided by 15? Well, let's do both, 17 divided by 15. That might get a little confusing. We'll do one at a time. Okay. All right, so I've got my 15 divided by my 17. When I plug that into my calculator, I get... Uh, a whole bunch of numbers, but it's basically 0.88235, okay? I'm going to leave that number in my calculator. Um, since that's less than 1 and it got smaller, I know that I have to multiply by the 0.88235 and some other numbers, which means I'm going to be dividing by the 0.88235 over here. Now, I know something about math, and I know that when I divide by a number less than 1, it gets bigger, so I'm pretty sure this is going to give me the right answer. So I'm going to take 37, and I'm going to divide by that number that I had, and I'm going to cheat and use the answer button in my calculator so I don't have to worry about rounding, and I got 41.93. That is just a little bit bigger, just like I was expecting. Now, what if I had done this instead of using whoops, the, uh, the 15 divided by the 17, what would I have done differently? Well, if I had done 17 divided by 15 instead, whoa, 17 divided by 15, I would have gotten 1.13, 3 and a whole lot of 3s. Um, and so what I see here now is that I would be dividing by 1.133. So over here I would have to multiply by 1.133. And so if I do that, times 137, 1.133 times 37. And I get the same answer, 41.93. So this is what's nice about these problems. Maybe you don't know which one it's supposed to be divide, multiply, but you know a little bit about math and numbers and how they work to know that I have to divide by this to get it to be smaller, which is my goal here. And then you know that it has to be bigger, so you have to make it bigger by multiplying. So that's how you, you're going to have to think through these. Um, they're pretty easy um, problems once you get the hang of them. You have a whole bunch in your handy homework, uh, your practice packet, so that you can uh, practice getting these correct. If you have any questions or you want to see additional examples, please, please, please ask your teacher. Um, and if you don't like the way I did these, please, please, please watch a different video. Okay. All right. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed pressure versus volume.